Hi everyone. I hope you have been doing good and you're all set to take on this particular course. Yeah, so let's get started. Uh, so have you ever wondered what happens under the hood when you type a command like docker run minus itd and let's say uh, uh, you give the name of a image like python or nginx so let's say i type docker run minus itd python what happens under the hood so docker is comprised of four major components uh, the first component is the docker daemon the second important component is container d which is another daemon then the third important component is shim which is the third daemon and fourth important process is run c uh, now the way this the way in which this has been designed is after giving careful thought uh, so you know, i mean one could argue that you know why not have a single process for all these different activities that we are going to carry out uh, but you know if we had a single daemon doing all this job which the, the which a container d does or shim or run c does we will uh, realize that there will be single point of failure so that is one of the reasons why we have uh, the docker team has actually broken this system down into different demons and processes but and uh, the crux of the problem at this point in time is to understand what what does hap what happens when you do a docker run minus itd say python so what happens is you know uh, when you type a command like that the agent which is docker agent which is running on the host machine uh, sends a http post request to the docker daemon and the docker daemon endpoint which actually receives this particular post request is container create now i hope everyone understands the fact that when you type docker run minus itd python and let's say there is nothing available on your local machine related to python um, then the docker system has to ecosystem has to actually go and pull this python image from somewhere so normal circumstance unless and if you, there are two ways to do it either you can go to something called a docker hub which has all the images well-known images of well-known software and other way is to have your own repository and then make docker point to that particular repository so and these are and things of convenience and whatever suits well for you you can use that so what happens is when you type this uh, docker run minus itd python and let's say this python software is not available on my local machine the daemon will actually send a request to docker hub and that's another http get request and not a post request so as you can understand you might be wondering why there's a post request at the beginning and then a get request afterwards the incoming request the inbound request to daemon is to create a container for python so that's why you know you have this endpoint called container create so what has essentially happens is when the post request comes to the daemon it'll it has to finally go and create a container based on the image of python that either exists locally on the system or you know you pull it from something like docker hub but since in my case this daemon is not present locally on my machine what happens is daemon uh, sends a http request to the docker hub and the docker hub pulls do, i mean sorry i'm sorry i beg your pardon uh, docker hub actually sends the images associated with python as a set of independent layers and that is received by daemon and it creates a, a local repository where it stores all these images in a layered fashion so this is what happens when you type a, a docker run minus itd python and once this system gets into the local repository the next thing that the daemon has to do is take this information and spin off a new container and in that container you will have the python application running so this is how a typical uh, docker ecosystem works and we'll get into into the details associated with uh, the process of creation of a container in the subsequent lectures Thank you for listening.